Hi, I'm John. Welcome to Edgetone Studios. So a couple of years ago, just about two years ago, I did a video called Do Personas Studio Live Mixers Rival Universal Audio Apollo Interfaces? And really the point of that video was to talk about the fact that there were options, but really to explain why I went to a Studio Live Mixer as my primary audio interface uh, for the studio. And the main reason was hands-on control, but there were so many other features I got um, out of making that move that it filled up pretty well a full video. And that's the second most popular video on my channel, still gets views today. It was only surpassed by my Parkinson's diagnosis video, which kind of launched my channel because when I announced that, people found it and kept commenting and it drove traffic to my channel, which was great. I mean, it sucks to get Parkinson's, but it's great to get, uh, you know, views when you're making content. So I had a question come up some time ago, so I didn't go back and check uh, which user it was on um, YouTube that asked me this, but uh, if you're watching, you'll know who you were, uh, put a comment. Uh, thank you for bringing up this question. But it was, could I show a little bit more about how uh, the fat channel uh, integrates between the Studio Live Mixer and Studio One. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to take you through how it integrates, show you what you can do with it in a quick, simple demo, and then summarize that at the end. So let's get to it. <music> Okay, this is probably my ninth time recording this, but hopefully I'll get it right this time so that you can actually hear what I'm doing as I'm doing it here. So I've got a blank Studio One session, and I'll bring up this Studio Live Mixer as a side-by-side. -side. And in the session, I'll add a track. Let's move it over so you can actually see. I'm adding a track for the Gemini, Super Gemini by Udo. It's stereo, and in this case, I'm choosing input as Gemini because I've got that predefined in my uh, setup. And if I play this now, we are not listening through Studio One, we're listening direct through the mixer here. So I've got those tracks selected. You can't really see the scribble, but it says Gemini and it says 25 and 26 there. Okay, we've got audio coming through. And because I've already recorded this multiple times, we already have Fat Channel applied to this signal. So let's go back. There's the raw signal. I can turn on some compression, turn on some EQ, and you hear the signal changing. So if I now record that, When I play it back, you can hear that the fat channel was not applied to the recorded signal. So the default for the mixer is that it's going to apply the fat channel to the audio that's coming out of the mixer, out of the mains, for example. And it's not going to apply it to the individual inputs that are getting recorded. However, you can do that. So let's see how you do it. You go into your options for the mixer on Studio One and you turn on audio device controls if you haven't done so already. And that brings up your ability to control a couple of the features of the mixer from Studio One. You can turn up the gain, uh, which you can't see because it's off the screen. On it, It's over here, so you can't quite see that. Uh, you can turn on Phantom Power, which I won't do because I don't need it going to my synthesizer. Or you can play with fat channel here and a couple things you can do first of all you can open a software instance of exactly what's going on on the mixer so whatever you're changing here will also change on the mixer so you see that changing or if i go to the high frequency and start marking with it you see it changing over here in the software so you have software control of the digital signal processing on top of that there's a little icon here that says apply DSP to input signal. It also shows up in the fat channel here because this is the fat channel for channel 25 and, and it's linked channel 26 on 
the mixer and it says onboard DSP right there. So Studio Live 32S channel 25 onboard DSP. So that's what you're controlling through software. If you apply this and we go back and record again at the end here, let's hit record again. Now you can see it's applying the DSP to the recorded signal. So on playback, we'll hear that the first signal doesn't have the DSP applied. If we re-recorded it, it would. And as it hits the second recording, where we turn the DSP on, it's applied it to the signal. So you have the option of recording one or the other. But what about the case where you recorded the raw audio while listening to the fat channel and after the fact you think wow i want to apply all those settings to fat channel in studio one as a regular insert well a quick way to do that is grab this fat channel by left clicking on it drag it into the insert and it makes a copy of those settings still at this point in time linked to the dsp in the mixer and you can now play that back with the dsp applied And it's doing that as a Studio One insert, a VST, that's being applied after the recording. So if we played it right through, it will apply it twice over here because it's already been applied to the recorded signal. And you heard the hum come up there because we're double compressing that signal. So you have the option of uh, recording with DSP without DSP, but then after the fact, applying the DSP. But as I said, it's linked to the DSP in the, basically the, the processing going on inside the mixer. However, just click this little icon and now it's not. And now you can adjust your recorded mix however you want. You could change equalizers. Let's say you want the Alpine EQ instead. And if you, go back to what's going on on the console, it's still the vintage EQ. So you could basically do something completely different after the fact with the recording. So it's best of both worlds if you want to record the raw signal and then apply the DSP afterwards, you can still capture what you set up during your tracking. And that's pretty well what I wanted to show you today. So as you can see, the uh, Fat Channel interface is a great digital signal processing tool for the uh, mixer. Uh, basically, you can use it uh, for live mixing, uh, for live performance. And then if you're recording that performance, you can apply all that uh, digital signal processing to the recorded performance, individual tracks, or if you're integrated at the time of recording with Studio One, then you can not apply those DSP settings, but drag all the fat channel settings to the tracks and have them available to tweak for further mix down. So to me, it's a fantastic uh, feature of the Studio Live mixers. Um, as I, I said in my other video, which you can watch there, up there, um, there's quite a bit you can do with these mixers. So check them out.